Good morning, meteorologist Bob Acanfrio with today's tropical update for Saturday, August 20th, 2011. I'm going to focus on two areas uh, with this update this morning. We have Tropical Storm Harvey here, um, ready to make landfall. It's probably about, uh, probably about six hours away from landfall here across Belize, six to eight hours. Um, going to try to make a run out of hurricane before landfall. It's probably pretty close to that right now. We have hurricane hunters in there. They're going to be investigating this to see if we do have a hurricane. Um, it's going to be pretty close. It really has developed in that little area there as, as these storms do rapidly intensify in this area before landfall um, near in Belize. Uh, we've seen this happen a lot of times. I wouldn't say Harvey's going under rapid intensification, but it's really tightened up a lot over overnight and um, could get pretty close to a hurricane before landfall. We have Invest 97L out here. This is the one everybody's eyes are on, especially across the United States. Um, in about seven days, it could be knocking on the door of somewhere across the southeast uh, area there or the eastern gulf. Um, so all eyes are on this. Um, no surface circulation yet. I'll show you on the visible. It's not there yet, but um, it's getting close. Um, Hurricane Hunters will be in there later this afternoon. And of course, as you see here by the National Hurricane Center, all interests, Lesser Antilles, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, will be monitoring this closely. Would not be surprised to see a tropical depression out of this system um, by tomorrow as it nears the island. So again, all eyes, and I'm going to focus on 97L here in a moment. And then of course out here, um, this is Invest 9899L, not going to be a bother for the United States at all. It's going to be in an area where there's a lot of drier air and lower sea surface temperature. So it could be a slow developer, maybe develop eventually, but this one will head out to sea like this. All right, so first off, Tropical Storm Harvey. This was as of 5 a.m. I don't have the 8 a.m. up here, but still 60 miles per hour winds. Like I said, Hurricane Hunters will be in there uh, this morning right before landfall to see if we do have a... Um, a uh, hurricane or not so we'll have to see there it will um, eventually weaken over Guatemala and Mexico the next couple days again the main threat will be flooding rainfall flash flooding across Belize Guatemala Mexico parts of Honduras here so it's going to be the main threat with um, with Harvey and if you see the visible loop this morning you could see um, moved right over Rotan Island here and um, really tightened up overnight so we'll have to see again if we do have a hurricane before landfall. Uh, putting on the colors, you could see big blow up of convection right near the center there. And um, again, we'll make landfall here in the next, uh, probably in the next six hours or so. If we look at the sat uh, the radar loop here this morning, you could see it looked like a little eye feature trying to develop here before landfall. Um, the system actually kind of sped up a little bit this morning, which is probably good news um, so we wouldn't really get a hurricane out of this. Just looking at this radar, it's kind of tough to see. Um, it looked like an eye feature was trying to develop, and then the last two few frames, it looks like it's kind of going away again. So whether we have a hurricane or not, we will have to see what the uh, hurricane hunters say. Okay, and then of course models here for 90, for um, sorry, for Harvey. Again, west, west he goes and will dissipate eventually. All right, so now the main look here is Invest 97L. Everybody's talking about this, especially across the United States, us here in the uh, southeast, Gulf Coast, even along the east coast, um, really want to know what's going to happen with this system. Okay, first visible loops this morning. You can see no real surface circulation. If you try to look at these low clouds here to the south, you still see a lot of southeasterly winds in here. Um, but it's getting there. Convection starting to build. This is probably where the center will develop right in here. Um, it's getting past that 55 west marker. So again, um, warmer waters, less dry air. It's definitely on its way. It has a nice big, uh, big moist envelope with it. And it's just going to be time before this system definitely gets to be a tropical depression, tropical storm, and maybe hurricane. And the next name would be Irene. Put a little color on this this morning, and you see convection starting to just consolidate slowly but surely. It looks like if the center does develop, it would probably be right in this area here. And this is about 400 miles to the east of St. Lucia. So again, this is where we're looking like it will eventually get going here. Showers already starting to reach the islands. Going to be an unsettled, unsettled weekend for the islands. Gusty winds. 
you know, maybe some tropical storm force winds if this system could get going. And then looking at the wider view, so here we go. Here is Harvey. Here is what will be Irene. And of course, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. Right now, the track does look like it's going to slip south of the Virgin Islands and just south of Puerto Rico. So depending on how strong, you would definitely, you guys will definitely be under tropical storm watches and or warnings uh, more than likely um, for Monday, for the Monday, maybe late Sunday, Monday time frame. Um, depending on how strong or how quickly this does develop, you know, whether you will get these tropical storm force winds or not. But definitely looking like it's going to slip just to the south of um, you guys here across Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands. So again, I think you're going to escape uh, again another uh, storm here not not faring too bad but again it'll just depend on how fast it'll strengthen to the south of you and then from there i'm going to show you the models where does it go does it go over hispaniola doubtful it's going to move north of hispaniola right now it looks like it's going to come in probably south or over the island and of course that has a lot to do with what it's going to look like afterwards does it get eaten up across hispaniola you know, a lot of ifs there in the forecast. And I'm, again, I'm going to show you the models. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I'll show you the model runs here in a minute. Uh, water vapor loop, we do have a tuck feature right in here, upper level feature. But you can see anti-cyclone on the east side of this tuck feature. So it's in a great environment for, for strengthening. This will continue to be the case. Uh, this tuck feature is kind of weakening and lifting. Shear is going to be pretty good through its lifespan might get some northerly shear in this region right in here around Hispaniola. We'll have to see what kind of effects that has on our system. So the shear is um, pretty good, not fantastic. Um, not saying, wow, the shear is going to be unbelievable. This thing's going to blow up. So, But shear is pretty good, so could be worse. And I'm definitely in a good environment in the next couple of days on the east side of this tut with this um, upper cyclone you could see really this outflow just expanding over the system and uh, you know once this gets a low level circulation going we could see this start to really crank up here and that's why still for Puerto Rico you just got to keep your eye on this because if this really could get itself together and start strengthening um, and get a little closer to Puerto Rico you guys could be in for some definitely some some heavy weather come Monday so definitely keep your eyes on that shear and here we are so there's our tuck feature right in here so a little bit of stronger shear to its northwest it's going to happen though as this moves it's going to kind of move in tandem with this uh, tuck feature lifting but then again as it gets up in this region in a few days we might see some northerly shear hitting it so again we'll have to see how that plays out um, and whether how strong um, Irene will get vorticity you can see not there yet Again, we've seen this with developing systems before, but it'll be there. You see a nice little strong vorticity out here with our uh, with our two invest out this way. And this has a great little circulation with it. But again, it's going to move into cooler waters. And then really it's going to have its way out to sea. So I'm not going to really focus on that right at the moment. And now, okay, let's go through model runs here. These are all the models kind of grouped together here. A lot of these other hash lines are actually the um, ensemble models by the GFS. So you can see definitely a lot of the models are focusing just south of Hispaniola, across Cuba, and then that avenue. The avenue I've been talking to you about between the high pressure over the Rockies and our subtropical high in the western Atlantic. It, it has to take this avenue. And it's going to be the battle. Who's stronger? Which way is it going to go? You know, will the subtropical high be a little stronger? And then we get this kind of motion and maybe hit somewhere across the uh, northern Gulf states. Or is um, this subtropical high and the Rockies high, is this subtropical high a little weaker, shifts a little east, and then we get more of this motion and maybe we get uh, east coast runner. That's where the models are still. But again, the focus now has been consistent the last few days of somewhere across Florida here. You know, either side of Florida. So... We're starting to narrow this down. Then again, then you have to think about, well, what kind of land interaction will this system have? That That's going to have a lot to do with strength and everything. Does it rake right over Hispaniola, Cuba, then comes up towards Florida and, is, and isn't much at all of a system? So, you know, still a lot of ifs um, as far as that goes. But you can see this is going to be the general trend. And this is, again, where I've been thinking all along, somewhere in this area here. 
And if we look at intensity, and again, intensity models, they're always tough before even a system gets going. Just kind of look at these with a grain of salt right now. But a lot of them do bring this up to a hurricane in about 72 hours. Okay, different models. Uh, Euro model, we're going to go through the Euro model, then the ensemble models. Euro model, again, very consistent on bringing this system up towards Florida uh, in about seven days. And you can see right here. And, but then we look at the Euro ensemble models and the ensemble models. And this is like all the different models of the Euro put into one. Um, all the different, you know, variations. And it's a little farther west. So interesting to see there. So that's why there's still a lot of ifs in this forecast. They're a little farther west in the Gulf. And let's compare the GFS. Here's the GFS run, the latest run. Again, just south of Hispaniola, over Cuba, and, up, and then up towards Florida. Very consistent with the Euro. And the um, GFS ensemble models, which we'll put into motion here in a minute here. Here's, it, here's our storm. Uh, near Hispaniola, you know, then over Cuba, pretty consistent with its operational run near Florida. So there's the trend right there. And you could see it pretty much playing out. UK Met model, which is another pretty reliable model, has been a little farther west than the um, GFS and Euro model. It only goes out um, till Thursday, so we don't have an extended... UK Met doesn't go farther out than that, so we can't see anything farther out than that. But you can see it is a little farther west. So again, where does it go? Does it come up this way? Does it swing more out towards the Gulf? So that's going to be the battle between our subtropical high and our Rockies high. And there's going to be that avenue. And where that avenue is, it's going to find that weakness and move up. Last but not least, the HWRF model. Again, HWRF a little farther north actually brings it over Haiti and then starts bringing it up possibly up the uh, east coast or near Florida. So you see where the trend is with the models. Really going to have to watch. Definitely looks like right now I would have to say it's going south of Puerto Rico and probably just south or near Hispaniola, Haiti area. So that's definitely going to put the focus Florida, possibly Eastern Gulf. Again, remember I told you earlier this week, if it was going to go north of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, then it could be an East Coast runner. Um, that's looking a little less likely right now. I'm thinking more of a eastern gulf coast florida possibly southeast kind of hit um so that's where my focus is right now on this people in this area definitely be aware it's about a week away keep watching it make your plans accordingly of course you should have a hurricane plan in, in place already if you live across the gulf coast or southeast so i'll keep you updated on this system uh, through the weekend and uh, have updates as needed have a good uh, good saturday